Hello, beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Virginia. Let me open with prayer. Dear loving Heavenly Father, may you have all the glory for this video. May your words be spoken, not mine. And may everyone who comes to watch it be blessed. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me present the gospel. This is the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus loves you, and he wants you to spend eternity with him, but that cannot happen unless you are born again. So first, admit that you're a sinful creature. Repent. We're all sinful. We all are. Then believe that Jesus is who he says he is, fully God, fully man. He came to earth, lived a perfect and sinless life. He shed his blood on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins, all of your sins, past, present, and future, no matter what you've done. For the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. He died, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. All you have to do is believe that. Just believe it, without adding in any of your own good works or trying to be good. None of that. Uh, it has nothing to do with belonging to any church, being baptized, practicing any religion. The moment you believe is like a personal encounter in your heart between you and God himself, where you call on his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You might say, come into my life, Lord Jesus, or Jesus, I believe, save me. Whatever it is, talk to God. And the moment you believe, you are born again. You receive the Holy Spirit. He will never leave you because salvation is eternal. You can never lose it. So I hope you have believed, because the alternative, not believing, means you will spend eternity in hell, and nobody wants that. So please believe. My email address is in the description box, or you can leave a comment below. Today, we're going to talk about breaches. What is a breach? But first, I want to say that we know that there is a great shaking coming. We just know it. As soon as the rapture happens, this world will be catapulted into chaos. It will be really shaken up. And a friend of mine also mentioned a great shaking. And just, just before he mentioned that, I had looked at a post from Dutch Since that says that predicted coming up in the next week, warned, they're expecting magnitude 8.0 earthquakes uh, perhaps in a number of places, I'm not sure where, but within the next week. And so there are no coincidences. My friend mentioned it, and I had just seen the earthquake warning from Dutch since. So I want to say also that there are parallels between Jesus' resurrection and Jesus' coming at the rapture. Get these, these comparisons or these parallels. In Matthew 27, 45, it says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And I will tell you, and you know this too, there's a lot of darkness in the world right now. And that's why we're all just at our wit's end. We're all going nuts because it's so dark and evil out there. And then, so that's the first parallel. The second parallel is there was a great shaking. Matthew 25, 27, 51 says the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And I think we should think about when the dead in Christ are resurrected at the rapture, there will be a great shaking from that. And the third comparison or parallel is Matthew 27, 51, which says the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And I say Satan is trying to rend the veil between natural world and the spiritual world with CERN. 
That's what's going on right now. So there is a great shaking coming and also a breach is coming. And I'll tell you where this started. A couple days ago, someone made a comment on someone else's channel and she said, I keep hearing the word breach over and over again this last week. She said, I don't believe there are, inc there are coincidences. Well, there aren't. And so what does that mean? A breach of etiquette, a breach of conduct, a breach of protocol. I, I started thinking this way. Why is she hearing breach? Well, the Lord was about to answer that for me. First of all, that same day when she said she had been hearing the word breach, I read Genesis 38, 29. And this is the passage where Tamar is giving birth to her twins. And she's the, she's the woman who pretended to be a, a, a harlot. And Judah, son of Jacob, went in unto her. She got pregnant with twins. And here's what it says. And it came to pass... As he drew back his hand, this is one of the babies coming out, that behold, the brother came out. So, and she said, how hast thou broken forth this breach be upon thee? Therefore, his name was called Pharaoh's. So the first baby stuck out his hand. They tied a red thread on it. And then he pulled back his hand and the other one came out first. So that refers to a person and as you hear the rest of this video, I think you're going to see that this all ties in together. And I believe that this verse was a rebuke of the Antichrist who is preparing to be revealed in this context that I'm giving. Because he's coming and saying to God, I'm going to be first. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a lot of things. I will, I will, I will, like he said in Isaiah chapter 14. So let me go on to the next chapter that I read that same morning was Isaiah chapter 30. And most of it is a rebuke to Egypt. Okay, so here, listen to this. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 13. It's about an event. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. There's that word suddenly again. For when they say peace and security, then su sudden destruction come up cometh upon them. Well, along with this event or this, this, um, this verse, I want to draw your attention to an event that is taking place called COP27. And a year ago, I did a video on COP26, which was held. It was a conference held in Glasgow, Scotland. And I believe that, uh, that Obama was in charge of it. And it's the famous one where Prince, Prince Charles, who he was Prince Charles at the time, mentioned, kept referring to he who has trillions of trillions of dollars at his disposal. Okay, this is the next one. COP27, the conference is taking place in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. Notice it's in Egypt, just like the verse from Isaiah that I just read. And the dates are November 6th through the 18th. And once, and again, once again, 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I am certain that they're going to be talking a lot about peace and safety at this conference. Now, on Sunday, November 3rd, during the, excuse me, 13th, during the conference, they will travel to Mount Sinai for a ceremony of repentance for having hurt the earth, it's a climate change conference and an affirmation of the ten, com ten Commandments of Climate Change. It is extremely blasphemous. They're going to Mount Sinai to 
initiate or install or adopt these 10 commandments. And what's interesting is that Mount Sinai is north of Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt. It's north of it. And it is in Isaiah 14, which I already mentioned, where, where Satan says, I will ascend to the sides of the north. Okay, so I want to add right here Psalm 2, verses 1 through 3. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And that's that's really what they're doing. They're saying, we don't want your Ten Commandments, God. We want our own Ten Commandments. And what's interesting, even more interesting, I thought, is that in this video, and I'm going to leave the link in the description box, and I'm also going to post it as a community post for everybody to watch. Um, Newsweek published some of these commandments. Actually, it was about seven and all I could think of was the seven Noahide laws. And these are these are adopted by the occult. And these are their rules for, for living. I won't say righteous or godly living because it isn't. And they are, there are parallels between them. For example, the uh, Noahide laws, not to worship idols, and the Ten Commandments from the climate change conference are to acknowledge a higher power and there are not to commit murder do not murder um do not steal do not steal and so there are parallels between those and they all have the same source obviously well there's something else to tell you the video also provides information about lunar and solar eclipses at the time of the conference there will be 27% coverage of the sun. I take that to mean 27% of the sun will be covered. That leaves 73% uncovered. And so uh, I would just say, those of you who like to calculate numbers, there's something very important in the 27 and the 73. So please go ahead and post what you think in the comments below. So, um, the next part of Isaiah 30 that is very, very important, it talks about restoration of the children of Israel. Here's what it says, Isaiah 30, verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. In the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. I take this to be a rapture encouragement because God is going to bind up the breach of his people and heal the stroke of our wounds because we're all being wounded here on this earth at this time. God knows and he sees everything and he loves us all so much. He will take care of it. So until we are taken home, there are spiritual battles to be fought. And I want to glorify Jesus in these scriptures that I'm going to give you, which are great during spiritual battle. So Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus has all power. 1 John 4, 4, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Exodus 18, 11, Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. 1 John 3, 8, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And 1 John 4, 18, Perfect love, casteth out fear. 
I also thought of since Jesus is perfect love, he will cast out all of your fears and he will put his perfect love in you so that there's no place for fear in you and me too. So these are the verses I wanted to share with you. I wanted to share this important, I think it's really important information, this conference that is going to be taking place. So everybody hold the line. Hang on. We're all doing well. God bless you. I love you all. Thank you for coming. If there's another video to be put up, God will show me and I will post it. Until then, bye for now.